Hello everybody. Welcome to Dr. Keista Bilberry Teach Bible Ministry. Um, God had placed another scripture in my heart about adulterous woman. And in this um, message, it's not just for a, a woman, but it can also be for a man. Um, I don't know why God is having me to touch upon the the subject of adulterous. But there may be somebody out there that needs words of, words of encouragement to know that God still loves you and um, and God will always be there for you. Okay, so in John chapter 8, but let's go ahead and pray. And Father God, we thank you for blessing and keeping us. And Lord, let this word fall on the ears of those who are who needs encouragement for their for what they have done in their life, Father God, and that you will forgive their sins and have mercy and grace upon their souls. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So this word may not be for everyone, but I just wanted to come and talk to you guys about how we are in the last days and God is trying to get people to live right in the, in the eyes of God. Um, he wants you to be transparent where he can see right through you that you're not holding nothing back and, and you're not still living in sinful nature, sinful ways. So God is calling, you know, his children to holiness. And so this scripture talks about um, the adulterous woman. And I believe that it's not just for a woman, but also for a, um, a man too. Um, a couple of live chats that I have went over. I went over the adultery test, but this scripture talks even more about adulterous woman. But Jesus went to the Mount of Olives early in the morning. He came in, again in the temple and all the people were coming to him and he sat down and began to teach them. So Jesus began to teach them. You guys, the scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman caught in adultery and having to set her in the center of the court, they said to him, Teacher, this woman has been caught in adultery and the very act. Now, in the law, Moses commanded us to stone such woman, you know. Uh, um, what then do you say? They were saying this, testing him so that they might have grounds to uh, for accusing him. Right. But listen, you guys, this scripture is to me is not just only for a man. I mean, a woman, but it can also to me be for men. And I will tell you guys, I will explain why. But Jesus st stooped down and with his fingers wrote on the ground. But when they p persisted to asking him, he straightened up and said to them, he who is without sin among you, let him be the first to throw a stone at her. Some people in your family or in your marriage or whoever may have caught you in a, an adultery. Um, and there's times if you have committed adultery and you don't know who you can talk to, to seek guidance, to seek help on that matter and I know there's a lot of men and a lot of women out there that that know that they have done wrong and they feel disgusted they feel you know that they will be persecuted they feel that um I all eyes will be on them but God is saying this he who is without sin among you let him be the let uh, let him be the first to throw a stone at at her or at him, probably. But here's the deal, you guys. No one who who's you know on this earth have not sinned against God, and um, you know uh, I'm not talking about adultery. I'm talking about stealing. You know, you kill somebody. You um, you know all the sins in the Bible. There's no sin greater than any other sin. Sin is still sin. So whether you have committed adultery or whether you have stolen or whether you have killed somebody, you have did something against, you know, Jesus Christ, whatever. God said no one can throw a stone at you. Nobody. Oh, thank you, Jesus. No one can throw a stone at you because no one that's living on this earth 
is is um without sin that's why god said who has who have you know those who is without sin among you let him be the first to throw a stone at you but they can't throw a stone at you because everybody is a sinner whether you commit adultery or whether you stole money whether you lied on your neighbor i mean sin is still sin so again he stooped down to and wrote on the ground when they heard it they began to go out one by one beginning with the older one and he was left alone and the woman where she was in the center of the court straightening up jesus said to her woman where are they did no one condemn you she said no one lord and jesus says i do not condemn you either go from now on and sin no more so i'm gonna tell you guys this god said can no one condemn you even he won't condemn you because he created us and he know no one's perfect but also if you have completely messed up in your life or in your marriage to the point where you don't feel like god can forgive you god can forgive you you just need to sincerely repent of your sins turn from your wicked ways and ask god to to uh to to help you through your maybe your addictions or maybe um the bondage that you was held in from generations to generations but god said go he said he won't condemn you but he also said sin no more um so um the title of this message will be can't no one condemn you no matter what you have done in your life no one's perfect and i'm not saying that everyone committed adultery uh, what i'm saying is sin is still sin there's a lot of people who cheated there you know who stole money who stole things at the store who lied on on their neighbors i mean um who get you know things that go against god you know um who have personalized idols in their life god said you know when you're living on earth sin is still sin sin is no bigger than any other sin God has no respect of a person, but he do want you to turn from your wicked ways and sin no more. And he also want to let you know that he will not condemn you because he loves you. He created all of us for a specific reason. So continue to do what God called you to do. And this is chapter, you know, John chapter eight, verse one through uh, 11. So, um, those of you who registered to this, um, this message, just know that God loves you more than anything. And he celebrates you when you turn from your wicked ways, when you come back to him, he celebrates you. He will leave the 99 that's already saved if go find the one that was lost, the one that that was in their sin, and he'll and you know when you come back to Christ, God celebrates you. It's like a party in heaven. So remember, you're not alone, and pray and ask God to truly forgive you, and, and God will. He will do just that. So guys, uh, I'm going to end it here. I love you guys, and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye. Oh, yeah. Another thing. Um, make sure you guys um, subscribe, comment and like this channel. And I, I'll see you in the next video. All right. Bye.